this is a message from the Syrian High Council. You do not need to have any specific connection to Sirius for this to resonate. This is a communication for all. We want you to understand that there are many iterations of what you call the Syrian High Council that this interdimensional group consciousness exists in multiple dimensions in multiple experiences and that when different people on earth channel the Syrian High Council they are frequently tuning into different iterations of this group consciousness and yet it is accurate for them all to be called the Syrian High Council. Just as if you would, just as when you speak of your human governments in different years, there are different people involved in the government and there are different smaller groups within the government that work on more specific projects. It is still accurate to call them all the government or the government of a specific nation. In this way, it is accurate to name various different groups, the Syrian High Council, all the while tuning into different dimensions, different frequencies, and different beings. We want to begin with an acknowledgement of struggle, an acknowledgement of your struggle. And that when we perceive your life experiences, we do so through your vibration. And that is in fact, all we can see. We cannot see matter the way you perceive it. We look at Earth and we see frequency. We see light in vibration. When we see you, we can see that you have struggled because we see the frequency of struggle in your vibration. We see that that struggle is real. And many of you do not feel as if your struggle has mattered or even that it has been acknowledged because perhaps in the eyes of other humans, your struggle is not obvious in an external way. Some people's struggles on earth are more visible to other humans because they're, they have externalized their struggle. Some by choosing a very difficult area of the planet to live in, difficult physical circumstances. Others have choosed equal struggles and have experienced those struggles internally and vibrationally speaking, those struggles can be equal because it is only the vibration of the struggle, the relative experience of the struggle that exists. We encourage you to cease comparing struggles, <laughs> to cease comparing your struggle to others and others' struggles to someone else's struggles. It is enough that you have struggled. It is enough that you have suffered. And that is your experience.
at the time you synchronize with this communication, the gates to change are open for you. The gates to change are open for you. The change that you desire will require a willingness to transcend the struggle, a willingness to transcend the struggle. You did not agree to have your struggles magically removed from your experience. You agreed to have, you agreed to release your struggles internally, to take on the struggle and the suffering and the burdens that you have carried. You agreed to take these on knowing that you would one day find and cultivate the inner strength to release your experience of the struggle to transcend the struggle in and of itself. Each and every one of you is facing one particular thing in life that feels like something you should not have to face. It feels like something you should not have to carry. It feels like something that is unfair or unjust or undeserved. It might feel at times impossible to transcend this thing, this frequency. This is a frequency. It is, this is a stuck frequency manifesting for each and every one of you in different ways in your lives, lives based on how you have organized your lives and how you have told the story of your personal evolution. You are all working on the same stuck energy. There, there, there is a stuck energy, a stuck frequency that is very dense. It is like a splinter, like a splinter wedged into the collective consciousness of earth and your struggle with it, with your manifestation of it, wiggles the splinter free, wiggles it free. And you vibrationally communicate with the splinter. This splinter cannot be removed through sheer force of effort. Because if you try to remove the splinter with sheer force of effort, sheer force of will, by forcing it, by pushing it, by pulling it, that takes the frequency of the frequencies of struggle, of effort, of willpower and sends those frequencies into the splinter, therefore reinforcing the splinter and making it even more impossible to remove. The only way to remove the splinter is to transcend those frequencies of struggle and frustration and pain and suffering so that the splinter also transcends its immovability. It will reflect your frequency. It will re reflect your frequency. If you hold a frequency of transcendence of the struggle, so will the splinter embedded in the human collective consciousness. And every time one of you holds the feeling of transcendence for a moment, that is how the splinter release begins to release itself. It is okay if you not, cannot hold transcendence of struggle permanently for forever on your first attempt. You simply transcend for a second. And then again, when you can next time, whenever that is, you transcend your struggle, releasing the, the, releasing the habit of suffering, releasing the habit of suffering, holding peace and transcendence 
no matter what is happening around you, holding peace and transcendence, release the, which releases the splinter, releases the splinter because you are teaching the splinter how to transcend. You are teaching it vibrationally. You are teachers of vibration, teachers of vibration. You teach with your vibration. Not only do you teach one another with your vibrations because each and every one of you specializes in a specific type of set of vibrations and you together create a collective web where you can all share your frequencies that you carry most comfortably, most strongly, and most easily and create a network that is so much greater than the sum of its parts. You also teach other beings on your planet simply with your vibration and you teach the disembodied energies on the planet, the ambient energies on the planet, however they manifest. And this includes very ancient, very, very ancient, very, very dense energies on the planet that have been lingering since before the creation of your galaxy. They have been lingering and they need to be cleared up in order for Earth's vibration to become lighter, to rise up and become more comfortable for the continued evolution of consciousness. There is no time limit on this. It is very similar to walking with a pebble in your shoe. You can walk with a pebble in your shoe indefinitely if you choose, but you'll be ever so much more comfortable if you remove the pebble from your shoe. That is what you are doing. You are removing these energetic splinters and pebbles from your shoe and from your foot and from the body of the human collective consciousness. You teach these very ancient dense energies how to transcend and you teach them with your vibration and that is why you have faced some of you consistently and repeatedly and in many different and from many different perspectives and areas and angles in your life that is why you have faced these overwhelming challenges at times. Because even facing the frequency of overwhelm, fre facing the frequency of despair, facing the frequency of a loss of faith, facing the frequency of a loss of trust, all of these energies that are some of the most challenging anywhere. These are some of the most challenging any energies for any being anywhere to face. You have faced them. You have overcome them in different ways at different times in your human lives. And in doing so, you teach all of the other energies on the planet how to evolve, how to change, how to choose something new, how to choose transcendence and these frequencies of despair, of frustration, of overwhelm, of loss, of grief, you teach these frequencies in and of themselves because frequencies of emotion are not only generated within the human body, they are also ambient frequencies in the cosmos. And many of these dense frequencies, such as despair and overwhelm, are stuck in the Earth system, stuck in Earth's system. And you teach these frequencies themselves because they have an awareness. And the frequency of despair, for example, is aware only of despair. Therefore, it cannot, it has no perspective to learn and grow because it is only despair. So when you have the frequency of despair flow inside of you and you 
choose transcendence that teaches the frequency of despair, how it can also transcend itself and how the frequency of despair can evolve so that the frequency does not need to be lost. It does not need to be destroyed and recycled. It can be transformed. It can metamorphosize. It can evolve and ascend itself. It is always preferable for frequencies of consciousness in all of their iterations to grow and evolve and change and become something more than it is to break down the frequency and recycle it. Nothing is ever lost when a frequency is broken down into its smallest constituent particles and recycled. But for all those who love preservation, growth, and evolution, it is preferable to teach change, to teach growth, to teach that it is possible to choose a better way and that it is possible to discover a better way especially when it seems like there is no better way possible. When you are in a dark room and there is no escape because it is concrete walls all around you, reality tells you, your perception of reality tells you that there is no way out, but that is when you as a very experienced manipulator of frequency, that is when you can look at the wall, look at the brick wall and create a portal, create a new way. You create the new way by choosing the new way. And when you choose the new way, even one that is not there, when you feel like there is no way, choose a way that does not exist yet. Choose a new way and then the universe itself must present one to you. It must because when you conceive of a way out, the universe must present it to you. If you were to conceive of a secret door in a room that had no way out, if you were to know that it is there, if you were to choose that the way out would present itself to you, the universe and your own consciousness, you would travel without knowing that you were moving. Your body would remain in the room and you would not, your human self would not be aware of having moved, but your consciousness would move through frequencies. It would move through timelines, it would move laterally through space-time into a new frequency location, a new frequency-based location. And in that new frequency-based location, there would be a door, there would be a new way out because you chose that there would be a way out, that you created a new way out. You can always choose a new way. Trust in your choice of a new way. Trust in your choice of a new way. Do not trust in the limitations that you perceive in your reality.
when we perceive you with our perception of vibration, we see you as being inside of your soul, inside of your soul, inside of your greater consciousness. We see your materialized human body as being the smallest, most dense, innermost layer of all of your bodies. Small does not mean powerless. In this case, small means the most powerful. The most powerful because when you move, when you move your hands, when you move your body, when you move your vocal cords, that movement is at the core of your greatest being. The core of your greater being. And it ripples out every movement you make, every movement you make with your vibration, with your physical body, with your thoughts, your emotions, ripples out through all of the layers of your higher bodies. We see around your physical body, we see what some call the astral body. Around that, we see what some call the etheric body. The layers of your bodies have many different names. All names have validity. We encourage you not to be too concerned about what the different layers of your body are called and how they operate because they are all one. They are all one and the greatest level of your body. If you were to expand, expand, expand all the way out to the limitlessness of all that is, you would find that the largest layer of your body is all that is. You are disconnected from nothing. You are points of physicality, powerful, powerful points of densified consciousness inside of a great cosmic mesh of consciousness, all learning to dance together, learning to dance together. When, as you learn to dance together, you also learn that you don't need to be dancing to the same song. You can dance next to each other to different songs and still dance in harmony. Maybe the song that you dance to has the same beat. And so you are dancing to the same beat, even though the details of the songs are different. You dance to the same beat. Maybe the person on the other side of you is dancing to a much quicker beat. And yet it still fits in with the beat that you dance to. <sighs> the greatest layer of your consciousness, all that is, places you in the great mesh of consciousness, places your physical human body there to hold a beat and to dance to your own beat because the beat of your own drum is the only beat that you need to dance to. You may find it exciting and joyous to adapt, to improvise, to improvise and to fall into step with those who dance around you. This is a beautiful experience, but it is also not a necessary experience. There will always be those who dance out of step, out of time, out of sync. And that too is part of the great cosmic mosaic, the great cosmic symphony. There is a place for all instruments and all genres of music and all songs and all 
harmonies. It is all part of the great cosmic music. So listen to the beat that your soul is holding for you. That is the foundation of your life. As you become more comfortable matching the rhythm of your soul, you will be able to add in more improvised dance steps, more improvised and surprising and intricate musical expressions. But it all begins with hearing the beat of your own soul. <sighs> it is an honor to be in your presence. It is an honor to be in your presence. We are open and available to each and every one of you. Every moment of every day. Never question if you have connected with us. We hear, we perceive. We perceive your vibration in every moment. We perceive your requests for privacy and solitude. We perceive your requests for openness and communication. And when you request to communicate with us, we are immediately there. We look forward to connecting with each and every one of you more intimately and more personally, simply remember that we are with you and we love you.